I'm good morning. I'm so excited to be back here live with another Monday prayer hour. I'm just going to call it that for now. Um, today we're talking all about purpose. Now I have the actual definition of purpose pulled up here because it's a very interesting uh, definition. And dictionary.com defines purpose as the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. If we think about purpose and think about our purpose on earth and our reason for being, this definition speaks directly to that. Uh, one of the things in Million Dollar Stylist Live and inside the Million Dollar Stylist system that I taught or there were three core principles, identify your purpose, build your platform and create your product. But the reason why we always had purpose first is because purpose is so important. You have to understand why, <clears throat> excuse me, you're here on this earth so that you can fulfill whatever that thing is that you're here to fulfill. But you can't do that when you're in a career field or doing something that you're not purposed to do. That's why I interviewed um, a good friend of mine, Melvin Pillay, a few years back. And he shared on one of those interviews that the graveyard is one of the wealthiest places on earth because so many people die never having fulfilled their purpose in life. Your purpose is what sustains you. Your purpose is what keeps you going. I will never forget. Um, there's been two times in my, in my life where I've had two significant events happen um, while I was teaching at a seminar. Now, I could have very well canceled the seminar, but the way my purpose and my trust in God is set up, I kept going anyway. So the first time was my dad. My dad had been diagnosed with colon cancer. And while he was in surgery, I was teaching at a live event. In fact, I have a picture of his tumor and I had that picture. There it is right there on my face. There it is. That is the tumor that was removed. We can take it off now. <laughs> that was the tumor that was removed from my father's colon as I was teaching at one of my live events. Um, I will never forget that day. I wanted to be there, but I knew in my heart that I needed to be at that particular event for those people. And I knew that God had my dad. And it was so crazy because at that event, there was a young lady there who ended up needing some serious prayer at the end of that event. And so I had to, I had to sit back in that moment and say, okay, God, now, you know that I would much rather, I want to be with my dad, but I know that this is my purpose. My purpose is to teach to preach, to, to lay hands on people. I know that I'm walking and operating in purpose. Where do you want me? And I had to hear that answer and be obedient. All right. The second time in my life uh, was, and this one was, and, and by the way, my dad's fine. The surgery went, I mean, it, it went textbook. It couldn't have gone any better. Um, and he's doing amazing now. The second time was during my grandfather's funeral. Now, this was just maybe, I think it was three years, two or three years ago. I was in Dallas teaching at one of my live events in Dallas. At the same time, my entire family was at my grandfather's funeral. Now, of course, for both instances, I could have very well canceled or rescheduled the event and everybody would have been fine and understanding. But um, again, I trusted the Lord and I leaned in and understood like, how does this song go? I understood the assignment. I understood my purpose. That's why it's so important to give people their flowers while they're here so that when things like that do happen, there is no guilt associated with not being able to be somewhere like that in a moment. Now, a lot of people wouldn't agree. Uh, I would have canceled and I would have done this and I would have did that. But um I talked it over with my family, of course, and with my husband, and I was there to fulfill my purpose. And my grandfather had a beautiful home going, and that was it. So purpose 
is what drives me. Purpose is why I'm sitting here right now. Purpose is why uh, Lacewood University is launched. Purpose is why I have those hands on live events. When you understand your purpose, you can operate at a totally different level. OK, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. In just a second, I'm going to tell you all about my special guest. Um, now, this interview uh, was recorded just as we were getting ready to launch Lacewig University. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I did it, its due diligence and I wanted this interview to air. Right. Like it, there's a perfect sweet spot in my opinion, close to the end of the year when people are thinking about reevaluating their lives and, all right, look, what did I do this year? Why am I here? What am I going to do next year? And so this topic fits right in there when people are starting to reevaluate and rethink. I'm telling you, this interview is life-changing. But before I get into that, I want to go over here to the comments and say hello, because I saw some people here early. <laughs> All right, let me go over here to these comments and say good morning. By the way, I never wear head wraps or scarves or anything like that. Um, so this is like, I bought this from, oh, where did I get this from? I don't remember. You Go Natural, I think that's the, 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 the company. But I'm in love. I mean, oh my goodness, my hair is a hot mess under here. Because today is wash day, but I am loving this head wrap. And it's a t-shirt turban. It's got silk inside and it just wraps so easily and boom, it's done. Okay, comments, it is. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Sandra, you were here early this morning. Good morning. And by the way, that that uh, wig that you're wearing in your last Instagram post is everything. I cannot wait to repost that. Okay, <laughs> Anissa, good morning. Yes, I'm excited. Valerie, good morning. Rhonda Thornton, good morning. How are you? And Belle, hello, everyone. We're blessed to be together for another day, another time to connect. Yes, and I hope everybody had an amazing Thanksgiving. Uh, we did. I cooked, I feel like I cooked for 72 hours, um, and it was just the four of us. I started cooking Wednesday night at 11.30, don't ask. Uh, Wednesday night at 11.30, around 5 o'clock, 4, 4 o'clock, I went to bed. But all this, most of the sides were done, and then I woke up, made the turkey, the ham, the yams, and like a sweet potato pie. But it was good. It was real good. I hope everybody enjoyed their Thanksgiving break. Okay. Consuelo, hey, good morning. Good morning. AJ, good morning. Good morning. I threw that prayer up to the heavens for your son, AJ. I'm praying that everything goes smooth and textbook in Jesus' name, amen. Mary and Day, I really look forward to these live events. Lacewood University is definitely worth it. Yes, I'm learning so much in each module. You know what, that's amazing that you say that. Um, I'm getting ready to, some one day this week, I'll be sending out an email with a special link for, um, an impromptu live that I'm going to do on, I believe the date is December 11th. It might be the 10th, but I believe it's the 11th. And I'm going to do some additional training, but I'm also going to set you up for the mentorship program as well. And the additional training is going to be on crown nodding. I'm going deeper, even deeper on crown nodding. There's some stuff in there that I want to touch on um, to go even deeper with ventilating directions and stuff like that. So I'm really excited that look out for uh, an email from me with all of that information. Okay. Uh, Queen A's Locks. Good morning. Good morning. Danette Benson. Good morning. How are you? And Bill. Good morning, everyone. Love from Kentucky. I think you meant Kentucky. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, because it's afternoon on the East Coast. Nina. Good morning. Good afternoon. Yes, right. I do too. I love them. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, all right. Chantel Henderson. Good morning. Do me a favor while you guys, uh, while I'm saying good morning, hello to everybody, like, and share this live. Listen, this one right here, you, you don't, for most of these that I do on here anyway, you don't need to be a part of the beauty industry or the wig industry to benefit from, especially this morning. 
because we're talking about purpose and purpose transcends their industry. Okay. So anybody that is struggling with figuring out why they're here on this earth, share this live with them. And in the little text at the top, just type, you should be here or you need to be here. All right. This is going to be a really, really good one. It's going to be a real good one. And I don't want anybody to miss it. Okay. Let me wrap this up. Let me say good morning to a, a couple more people. Sarah, first time here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Danette, uh, I'm happy. I, shoot. I'm happy too. I had a great uh, week off. It was amazing. Uh, Shanda Braze. Good morning, all. Yep. Um, if, if, yes. <laughs> we'll call you A because y'all know uh, me with name pronunciations. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? Alessandra, uh, good morning, beautiful people. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Quinn's World, good morning. All right. So let me tell you before I get into um, before I get into the interview, I want to tell you about this amazing lady. So a couple months ago, I was in Colorado uh, with my daughter and my husband, and we were there working on some inventions, I'll just say, uh, with a really good friend. And I had one of my mutual friends uh, reach out to me, wanting me to help this amazing lady out with her business stuff, uh, specifically promotions ideas for her book. And I got a copy of the book and I read the book and listened to the audios that accompanied the book and was completely blown away. This amazing lady's name is E.R. Reed, Eleanor Reed. And she just... <laughs> I don't even know how to describe her, but the, the, the one word that I can say that describes her is brilliant. Never, I don't think I've ever in my life met a woman as brilliant as Eleanor is. So read a little bit of her bio and then we're going to get right into the, uh, right into the interview. So Eleanor is fondly known as Pastor Eleanor Reed, and she has an extensive background in business and ministry with a degree in metallurgical engineering from Carnegie Mellon. Yes, I know. And an MBA from the Stanford Graduate School of Business. Pastor Eleanor has worked for some of the most prestigious firms in the world, including management consulting, uh, including management consulting firm McKinsey and Company and investment bank Goldman Sachs. But her true calling is to be able to help others understand who they truly are and how to maximize their abilities to live fulfilled lives. She's now the pastor of Be Redeemed Ministries and international an international ministry based in North Carolina, where I'm from. <laughs> and she serves top tier consultant to C-level executives, business owners, and a coach to individuals. Welcome, welcome, welcome. E.R. Reed. This interview is going to be amazing. Make sure you have your notebooks ready. Take notes and I'll be back once we're done. All right, everybody. I'm so excited. Welcome my special guest, Eleanor Reed. Eleanor, how are you? I am great. How are you, Marquetta? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to um, sit here and do this interview, I know is going to bless a lot of people. So before we get into the interview, I just want you to take just a few minutes, even though I've already get, given the bio and all of that stuff and your information, um, I just want to take a few minutes for you to tell everybody who you are and what you do. Wonderful. Well, again, thank you for having me. This is a, really an honor to be here with you today and thank to you. share with your audience um, the topic of purpose, which has been something that I've focused on for a few decades, actually. Wow. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Lord has really used me to get revelation on identifying purpose and then how to deploy it in many different ways. So as not only a pastor, but as an author and a strategist, uh, which is what I uh, do for companies and businesses and entrepreneurs, uh, but helping people one-on-one -on -one, uh, understand why they're here, mm -hmm. 
mm. and what they're to do with the life they're giving given is really what I focus on. That's amazing. I, 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 uh, you and I have talked offline about this very topic and mm -hmm. I was blown away by your course and by your book. Um, there is a section in one of my seminars that I teach the three core principles, uh, that I would teach in this particular event are identify your purpose as number mm -hmm. one, uh, build your platform and create your product. And that purpose one is the one that is so incredibly important, but a lot of people always say, well, how do I know what my purpose is? And mm -hmm. my answer to them is, is always fall, fall on your knees and ask God in prayer. But you mm -hmm. have a methodical approach and strategy, which is what I love to help to identify purpose. But before we get into that, I want you to talk about why knowing what your purpose to do is important. It's one of the most important things that we can that we can know about ourselves so we can know where we want, where we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to be doing. Right. The key reason it's important is that each and every one of us was created uniquely by God. Mm -hmm. And he set us all in times and he set us all in seasons. He set us in families in order to accomplish something that will positively impact others in the world. Um, it can impact not only people, but it can impact the environment that you're in. So people that have a charge to do things to save the earth, the polar ice caps or something like that, they're moving in alignment with their purpose and their will, uh, the will of God for their lives. But it's critical because you were uniquely made in such a way that whatever it is that he puts you here to do, you have everything stored inside of you to do it, either through experience, education, or just his leading and guidance and what he's shown you. Even if you don't even recognize that he's shown it to you, you gather things over the years and in your lifetime that will help you achieve that which he purposed you to do. When you're not walking and living in the purpose that you were designed for, that's when you have a lot of frustration in life. That's when peace mm. is hard to find. That's mm. when joy um, is hard to find. When you're doing things that you think is right or that you think you should be doing, but it's not what God ordained for you to do. It's not the right thing to do. It might be expected by others for you mm. to do some things, but what is right for you to do. And that in the end, at the end of the day is what we'll all be judged on. Did we do with our lives what we were supposed to do with our lives or did we try to fit into somebody else's mold Ooh. and make it work? You know, that's, that's so uh, powerful that you say that. I, I run across people all the time who um, will show up to a live event or maybe take a virtual training from me who will say, uh, I, th I, I think I'm too old to start doing this. I should have done this a long time ago. But the reason why I didn't is because my parents didn't think that doing hair or whatever, whatever class they're sitting in mind, they didn't think that that was a, an honorable enough of a profession for me to do. But I just kept getting called back. I kept getting called back. And so finally I said, I'm just going to do it because, you know, as children, we want to please our parents and to do what, you know, what they ask of us, because we, that's just how na naturally how we're, how we're built. Yeah. But that does not mean that it's the thing that you're supposed to be doing. And so what would you say to the people who, who are going down a particular path that's watching right now? Because I have a feeling mm -hmm. there's somebody watching right now that is hungry to understand purpose. And they know they have a burning desire to do a particular thing that is probably the birthplace of their purpose or that, that seed that you talk about in your book. But they just don't know. They, they're unsure or maybe there's some fear there into walking out what that purpose is. What would you say to, to that individual? Yeah, well, I'm going to actually share a quick story. Yes. I was speaking with someone a couple of days ago about this, and I was sharing with them one of the things that often gets overlooked. We are all brothers and sisters, all mm. of us created by God. And when uh, you have parents, they technically are your brothers and sisters put here mm. to birth you into the earth realm. And parents, your role 
is to identify prayerfully what that child needs to learn and what direction that child needs to go in. You don't have to know the fullness of their purpose, but you need to know and have a sense of what direction they need to go in so you can point them in that direction as they grow. So it's not appropriate for a child to tell the parent, this is all the things that I um, want to do or who I want to be and become, but it's for the parent to help the child identify that and then make the way for them to do it. I believe what you're talking about is a situation where a parent will say, well, become a doctor, become a lawyer, do all of those great things so I can <laughs> And they won't tell you this this other part, but it's so I can tell all my friends. Like, oh, my child is, is, is such and such a doctor, doctor so and so. That's my daughter. That's my son. You know, and and so we let the what the world thought of what is acceptable, what is honorable, um, uh, uh, become what we put then on our children. And it's not supposed to work that way. Everyone has a unique job. We need excellent um, mm -hmm. stylists. Uh, because without them, you know, uh, <laughs> the world would be in a mess. What what would news anchors do? What yes. would actors do if we didn't have some of the best stylists or people that dedicated themselves to that craft? We need people that are designers of clothes and shoes because what would we wear if we didn't have them? We need people that are chefs because what would we eat and what would how would we know mm. how to put food together if people didn't study food science mm -hmm. so they could know how you make a recipe the right way. So that's why God put in each of us a seed, uh, something, of, uh, they call it passion. And yes, it can be passion, but it even goes beyond that. It It's part of your connection to the environment that you're in because wherever you're placed and we have a technological world. And so we can reach beyond the boundaries of the physical that we're in. Um, but wherever you're placed in whatever vehicles he gives you to reach out to other people, that's the vehicle that he wants you to use to use that talent, that ability. An ability is really your gifts, your talents, and your skills all fits into what your abilities are. And so that's why I take people through a process in the book, Live for Results, that says, okay, what are your gifts? And I help you identify what they are through the various questions that I ask. And gifts are those things that you are uniquely qualified to do that is not hard for you. It mm. comes easily. You know, they talk about child prodigies. Um, they can play piano with having only had a few lessons or, or or something like that. And then your talents are those things that you may work a little bit harder on, but it comes somewhat naturally to you. Mm -hmm. And then your skills are those things that you invest a significant amount of time in to build yourself up. We all have gifts, talents, and skills. And unfortunately, the way we're educated um, um, in mm. our in our uh, public school system, mm. we're taught that you can only learn one way. This is the best way to learn. Everybody needs to go this way. And for those for whom it's natural to learn that way, they get the A's, the A pluses, and the valedictorian sticker. Um, but for those that learn well, other ways um, that are not necessarily the way they teach everybody at school, you're made to feel like, well, I'm not that smart. I don't, you know, I can't do well. And so they tell you, oh, well, don't apply. And I, I had this too um, coming up in school, even though I did quite well, um, you know, for other reasons, people told me, don't apply to Harvard, don't apply to MIT. They'll never let you in. Um, even though I had the grades, right? And all the rest, but for other reasons, I was told not to mm -hmm. apply. And, uh, but nonetheless, I, I went to Carnegie Mellon and became an engineer. Uh, so I still, I still did great things and God still uses me. But, uh, you know, other people are told, well, you know, um, go take shop and go do something else instead of thinking of, about going to college. And not everybody's meant to go to college. Right. And those that work well with their hands, they can see an issue and they can fix it with their hands without ever having taken a course on mechanics or a mechanical deformation and all those other high engineering classes that we're, we're taught to take because that is their gift. That is a passion God put in them. And so um, they become 
what what they're intended to become um, sometimes by default but ultimately it will work out towards the will in the will of God for you as you pursue those things that you find joy in that you find peace in and where you find you're having a positive impact on others wow so I know I know in your well actually let me say this first um, oftentimes, too, what a lot of people uh, go through, and, and I have a person in mind in even mentioning this, is sometimes the expectation can also be a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. My um, One of my really good friends, her parents are not from here. They're from another country. And so culturally, you could, she's a professional makeup artist now, mm -hmm. has been to Paris, all over the place doing makeup. Makeup has taken her further than her IT career could have ever taken her. Mm -hmm. But her parents were so upset with her for pursuing that makeup career and had no idea that it would um, eclipse the IT career that she had. So a lot of times, too, it's a cultural thing. Right with um the career field that you decide to or that you choose yeah. based on the thing that you're told but i want to go back a little bit and talk about um learning because a lot of people feel that they need to be just like you said in a particular environment or that they need to to learn a particular way in school when that's not how we're all built to learn but yeah that also could deter someone from walking in their purpose because they may be purposed to do something that requires further education mm -hmm. and because of a particular thing that that or because they didn't do well in that type of setting they step away and say no i can't do that they can't they feel that they can't do the very thing that they've been purposed to do because of that obstacle but I always say that's nothing but the enemy tricking you and making you think that you can't do it because you're already equipped to do it. Right. Yeah. So in, in your book, you break down, um, you have uh, different steps that people can take. There's one particular list that they can make. Can you um, talk a little bit about uh, the person that has that's sitting there like, okay, I really want to do this. I'm ready to walk in my purpose. What is the first thing that I do? The first thing that you do is, and I put it in the book, know yourself. And then that is the process that I take you through of identifying what you really think about yourself and who mm -hmm. you really are and going back into your experiences and not the experiences themselves, but how did you respond to those experiences? What did they do for you positively or negatively? What did you learn from them? And where do you sit today based on those experiences that you had? Mm -hmm. Then once you know who you are, um, know who gave you what you have, and that's Ooh, knowing yeah. God. You have to know God for yourself because with his wisdom, and the knowledge that you have of what you do, that's how you expand, that's how you increase and become great. Uh, so for example, uh, we all could take the same class and get a certification in something, uh, but if we all try to open up a shop on the same corner, um, all try to work in the same space, there's gonna be an issue, there are gonna be clashes. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, you might get one client and there's five people trying to serve that one client. Well, who's going to get the client today? <laughs> and then as you battle with each other over who who's going to hold down this corner, then that client's like, I don't want to be bothered with that. They go away. And so mm -hmm. now you have no clients among the five of you. So you have to know where's your optimal place of operating. Uh, what Where's your optimal environment to do that, which you have been um, chosen to do and set in place to do. Uh, so that's one of the one of the critical components but knowing yourself and knowing who gave you what you have and that's knowing god mm, that's so good that's so good because when if you think about uh going in an opposite direction of what you've been chosen to do you become you're not yourself anymore you become the thing that you're doing mm -hmm. and so to understand who you are and whose you are, 
is really, really, really important because you have, you'll naturally get that revelation of, wait a minute, what am I doing? This mm -hmm. isn't even me. And then the Lord will begin to pull you out and, and order your steps to go and walk into whatever it is that you're supposed to walk in, which is yes. so beautiful the way that works and melds together. Right. But I want to ask you a personal question. Sure. How did you discover your purpose? Because a lot of my thought process is this, the people who, who are like dialed in, like you are with helping people walk out their purpose, usually have a story as to how <laughs> they got to that point. So how is it that what, what made you pursue purpose? I know when you were younger, every Tuesday night, your mom used to have Bible study with you guys, which is amazing to me. Yeah. I wish more parents would do that now, but did it start at a very young age? Did it start when you got older? When did you really say, I really need to find out what my purpose is and pursue that? Well, um, it did start at a young age, but I didn't realize it until I got older. Ah. And that's one of the things I talk about is why it's important to be able to reflect on what you've been through and pull the value out of the experiences you had. Because growing up, I went through a lot of very traumatic things. Um, I was abused, not by my parents, but I was abused by other people, suffered a lot of things. I was ridiculed. I was put down, you know, um, for some of us in a stylist, you would understand this week, the hot comb situation. My mom wasn't yes. really good at it. And so, you know, I'd have a little bit of hair today and next thing you know, you're smelling smoke and I have nothing tomorrow. Oh <laughs> so, no! Know, I went through a lot. Um, and a lot of self-image issues mm. uh, because of the things that I experienced and mm -hmm. how I felt about myself, which wasn't very good. But because I felt something in me and because of all that spiritual training, it, I spent a lot of time with God as a child. I prayed mm. a lot of times by myself. I'd lay in my bed at night and I talked to God about what was going on with me. And those scriptures that I learned early on, even though I didn't have the full understanding of them, I would say, God, well, you said this, I believe it. Um, and I trust that you can do this. I even trust that you can grow back the hair that my mom <laughs> burnt out yesterday, <laughs> grow it back by tomorrow morning, you know, that kind of thing like a child does. But as I got older and I began to process the different things that I went through and why I made some of the decisions that I made, um, I was able to talk to other people about it. And those experiences really got me to a place where I realized I had a genuine love and care and concern for people above and beyond myself. And I realized that I had to, um, that my, my role was to help other people live mm. the best life that they could live and not get bogged down by the pains of their past, but to understand the pain of their past and how to use it to achieve their, their destiny and their future. Because that's a lot of what I tried to do. I didn't necessarily run from the pain that I experienced, but I tried to say, okay, that's pain, but you know what? I'm going to fight back, right? I'm going to become the top runner in the country and make it to the Olympics. And I did make it to the National Junior Olympics and uh, was planning to go to the 1984 um, senior Olympics, but then my, my hamstring popped. Uh, um, and so I was injured and, and wasn't able to uh, fulfill all the training that I wanted to do. Um, and, but had another opportunity at Carnegie Mellon and, and trained with uh, one of the top uh, coach running coaches in the country who actually trained the Olympic team. He said, if you want to go to the Olympics, you can go. And it was at that point I had to say, God, really, what is your will for my life? I can go do this Olympic thing and train really hard all over again now that my thigh is better, or I can just focus in on what you have for me to do here. And I just decided just to focus in on my schoolwork and and, and where he was taking me um, in, in business and corporate and in ministry. And so um, as I did that, I really realized I have a genuine care for people and I want to see everybody come into their destiny. And he blessed me with so many um, gifts and talents. And I've learned so many different things. And sometimes, and there are other people out there like this. This is why I'm mentioning it. You can do so many different yes. things. And how do you choose what is the thing that you should do? Well, I heard a guy who was older when I heard his speech 20 years ago, um, he said, look, 
I just do everything in series. I don't try to do things in parallel. And that's where we mess up. Well, I'm going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. And you know what they say, jack of all trades, master of none, and none of that really materializes. But what you can do, like this man did, he said, I'm going to focus for the next 10 years on building a career, doing this and and enjoying it and making the best out of it because that's what I feel led to do. So he did that and was very successful. Then he used that success to do the next thing for the next five to 10 years and was very successful. And he just kept doing that until now he's probably 85, 90 years old, enjoying life and having being able to look back and say, look at all the great things I've done and all the impact that I've had. So um, that's one of the keys, especially if you have many, many abilities. Um, and I, I've tried to do it in parallel myself. It doesn't work well. <laughs> it doesn't hey, work I've tried well. it too. It does not work well at all. <laughs> but, but choose that one thing um, that you really feel in your heart of drive to do and you see the moment for. Mm. And then move into that moment trust God to give you the wisdom over it, take advantage of it and go hard, stay focused and get it done. And then build that up, doing your very best with that, putting your hands to the plow and making the best of that thing. And then after you've succeeded there and you feel like you've hit the plateau, then you can shift to the next thing. I love that. I love that. I want to go back a little bit um, for something that you said earlier about the the some of life's experiences that don't turn out so good. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, I believe it's in your audio um, series that goes along with the book. You mentioned an analogy, which I don't know why I haven't heard this analogy before, but it just blew me away. And it was about manure mm -hmm. and how with soil, because I, I grew up on a farm, so I could really relate to this. I grew up on my grandfather's farm, and every year you could smell the manure that he would either take from the chickens or from the cows to nurture the soil so that whatever it was that he was growing would be well nourished. Right. Mm -hmm. And yes. the manure is the stuff that nobody it's the stinky stuff that nobody really wants to deal with. Mm -hmm. but, and it wasn't necessarily required, but it was definitely helpful. And that's how um, I look at life's experiences that don't come out so good or that we mm -hmm. think aren't the best experiences. And they're not. We don't like it. It's not what we want to feel that those feelings we want to feel in that moment. But that's what makes us. That's what molds us and, and helps those experiences help us to be able to help other people by sharing those experiences. So I just love that analogy because it's so real and it's so true <laughs> because oftentimes we get so caught up sometimes in the experiences, the bad experiences that, that we've had. And a lot of people don't move past those experiences. And it's right. really, really sad because you see some really, really incredibly talented people who have giftings that they don't nurture because maybe they had a bad business partner or maybe something just didn't go well with the thing that they were purposed to do. So they never go back and revisit that thing because of that bad experience. But we have to understand that that's that's a nurturing for the soil. Right. I right. And it. Yeah. You know, people sometimes forget that your circumstance or your situation is different than who you are. Mm. And so mm. people often equate. I went through this. People said this about me. People did this to me and all the rest. And you take that in your heart and you let that get in your soul. And it holds you back because am I really like that? Why do people think that about mm -hmm. me? I never thought that about me. And you spend all that time processing that and carrying heartache or mm -hmm. carrying bitterness and unforgiveness or other things to make you feel inadequate or insecure. And you're wondering, and you're going through life wondering, am I really like that? Or who else might do that to me? Why did people do this to me? And then, and you never move past it, but you have to understand you are a flesh being, you're, you're made of soil and mm. the manure comes, everything works together for good. You put the manure 
on the soil so that whatever it is, whatever that seed is that you want to break through and come forth produces more bountifully. There's a lot of nourishment. There's a lot of benefit in that manure that um, if the cow didn't use it <laughs> and, and put it out there, um, there's still some in there that can be used to nourish those seeds so it grows properly and produces even more bountifully than it would have if you just went along every day, everything went fine, everything was perfect with you, you never suffered anything, you never went through anything, you'll have an okay life, it'll be all right. Mm -hmm. But those people that really soar, that really excel, they're people that went through some things mm -hmm. and figured out how to take the value out of the thing, but not carrying the thing itself into their future. Absolutely. I I say I used to say all the time, not even knowing what I was saying, but my my parents suffered from drug addiction off and on. Um, but the beginning part of my elementary life on they were on drugs. And then the middle part where I was in middle school, high school at the beginning off and then back on. And I always said, and I don't even know where I got this from, it had to be the grace of God, but I said, I will not be a statistic. I always said that I will not be a statistic. And then when my two brothers came along, I'm 10 years older than the oldest little brother. So I have two younger brothers. Um, I always said my, my brothers and I will not be statistics. Mm -hmm. And I did not know how I was going to get out of the small town. I'm from a really tiny town in North Carolina called Bud, North Carolina. <laughs> I didn't know how I was going to get out of there, but I was determined to not be a statistic because I just knew that God had to have more for us than that. My parents ended up getting clean and, you know, I lost my mom to breast cancer, but I still have my dad who's doing very, very well, um, which that alone is a whole not Ooh, that's God's grace, the grace of God. But when I, I I I realize now, hindsight is 2020, I realized it was nobody but God that planted a seed mm -hmm. in me that no matter how bad the manure smelled, <laughs> it got mm -hmm. nurtured and watered. And that's what gave me the drive to to leave or to get out of. Uh, that small town and get out of that situation because some people thrive in a small town. It's just mm -hmm. not what God had for me. But even coming, even going through everything that we went through with our parents as addicts, you know, there's a lot that comes along with that. I remember mm -hmm. having to sleep on my keys once so that I could go to school because my mom, um, she would go on these binges. And mm -hmm. if she went on a binge, she would take the car and wouldn't come back for a while and I knew it was getting close for me to graduate and I didn't know what I was going to do when I got out of school. So I knew I, it was important for me to graduate. So I would have to sleep on my keys. This was a short season of my life so that I could go to school mm -hmm. so that I could just get there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just did not want to allow my circumstance to be an excuse mm -hmm. for how I turned out in life. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing that separates a lot of people, the people that just, you know, live there however they live and say, you know, I'm because words are powerful. This is never going to change or this mm -hmm. is always going to be this way. You right. have to know and believe that it doesn't have to be that way, but you also have to decide that you're not going to, to live that way and that it's going to be different. And then, of course, walk it out in prayer. But right. that see that God planted in me whenever he planted it. I don't even know when, probably because throughout the entire time that, you know, if my parents were strung out, they made us go to church with my mm -hmm. grandfather. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there was a seed or something there that got planted, but no matter, no matter what your situation is or circumstance is, there is a way out, but you have mm -hmm. to mentally believe that there is a way out. Even if you're That's in right. a career field that you hate, that you don't like, you gotta believe and know that there is a way out of this and and, and you just have to fall down on your knees and ask God, help me, order my steps. Right. I wanna walk in purpose and I don't know where to start. Fall on your knees and ask God to order your steps. 
Yeah, definitely. I would agree with all of that. And you're, you have such a powerful story and testimony. Thank you. Um, and that is exactly that is exactly the point. Um, resilience is, is mm -hmm. a key word that comes to mind um, and being resilient. And again, remembering you are not your circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so you have the power to choose what you will and will not do at certain points in your life and making those right choices um, is what's going to help move you forward uh, into your destiny, even the more so as you um, keep everything submitted to God. Absolutely. Absolutely. So can you tell, um, I want you to talk a little bit about your the book and the course that goes along with the book. What prompted you to say, you know what, I have to write this. I know it was probably the Holy Spirit nudging you. <laughs> <laughs> say, hey, you got to do this. What was what was that thing that, that prompted you to say, I got to write this book and record this course? Yeah, I think one of the things kind of going back to my story a little bit, and especially after hearing um, and speaking with other people in ministry, uh, one of the things was the question, why am I here? Why am mm. I alive? I don't mm -hmm. get it. What's life really all about? Mm. And the search and the desire to understand that, uh, was really what pushed me to write the book. I was always one of these children growing up that, you know, when my parents said to me, do this, and I'd say, and respectfully, I'd say, well, why should I do that? And they'd, be, they'd look at me like, because I said so. <laughs> but I'm like, but why are you saying so? Why do I, really, I want to understand why do I need to do this? What will it do? What will the outcome mm. um, be? And what will be the impact of it? I've always thought of things in that way. And after frustrating my parents enough, they just stopped. They're just like, go ahead, no, just, just go. <laughs> but, uh, but for me, I've always wanted to know God at a deeper level. Why are mm. we all here? And mm. what are we meant to do? And it's my, my quest for that revelation. And he downloaded so much revelation to me when I sat and asked that question um, that I put it in this book. Uh, you know, I, he isolated me for a period of time. And um, in that period of isolation, I just sat before him. I had the word before me and he would just bring scriptures and then he would ex give me the revelation over the scriptures. And I'm like, ah, and I'd start writing whatever mm. he gave me. And mm. uh, that's really what, what caused me to write the book. Wow. Wow. And I, and I love the course that goes along with the book. Mm -hmm. So for those who are like me, I was eager to dive into your book and the course. How can they get a copy of the book and how can they go through the course? Sure. Um, all they have to do is go to liveforresults.com. That's the name of the book, Live for Results. And um, not the number four, but F-O-R, Results with an S on the end. Um, and um, the book is there. There's a little bit of, there's a short video there to give you a little bit of background about how I wrote the book and, and uh, you know, why I wrote it. And then there's a sample of the book there, even if you want to just read the first chapter and the forward and all the other initial information and see the table of contents that are there. So just go to liveforresults.com. And also I'm on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, all at Live for Results. I was just about to ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure to link everything um, in the description and all of that stuff so that people can go and follow you and find you. But I have to say, you have to read this book. You have to read the book. If you are at all, um, thinking about the same questions that she asked, why am I here? Not even if you're, I don't even care if you're not thinking about it. You need to know why you're here because we all play a role in the kingdom. We all have purpose. And I, I don't know if anybody else is like me, but I want everything. I want to be able to accomplish everything within my will that the Lord has set out for me to do. And that starts with knowing who we are, whose we are, and understanding our purpose. And when you read the book, you will begin to find revelation. It's very revelatory about your own purpose. And the Lord will begin to speak to you concerning your purpose. So I always, I say this, I've told a few people about your book, about Live for Results. And I say, but when you start reading it, have a notebook beside you because 
you're going to start writing and there's going to be some instances when you start writing whatever the Lord is giving you, you can't stop. Mm -hmm. So it's a very powerful book. It's very moving mm -hmm. and it does help you really understand and hone in on what your purpose is. Mm -hmm. So um, before we go, I would love for you to say a quick prayer or however mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit leads you for those people who are stuck. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I want you to say a prayer to help them uh, get unstuck so that they yeah. can begin to move in purpose. However long, I said quick, but however the Lord leads. Well, thank you. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to yeah. share about the great things that you have done for us already, how you have beautifully and wonderfully crafted us as individuals and placed us in times and in seasons such as these so that we can accomplish what you intended for us to accomplish here in the earth. We're praying now, God, for each and every person that's listening and watching, that God who's asking the question about why am I here? I want to give up. I'm tired of doing what I've been doing. I want to do something different. We're praying for them right now, God, that they would take a fresh perspective and they would find your perspective on their life so they can see it's not about the back and forth with other people. It's not even about the circumstances. It's not about their finances. It's not about and what happened to them yesterday or what other people think about them. But what matters is what do you think about them, Lord? Right now, Lord, may they seek your face and come to you and say, God, why am I here? What do you have for me to do? And Lord, even as you leave them to, to use the Live for Results tool, which I still use myself, as you give me more and more revelation as I reread it, God, I pray, God, that you would bless them mightily, that you would open up your word to them, that you would open up their lives to them so they can see you in a whole new way and see themselves from your perspective. And then ask you the next question, which I'm really big on. Not not, it's not enough to ask the first question, but you have to ask the second, the third, and the fourth. Now that I know, um, God, where I'm headed generally and what I'm supposed to do, how do I do it? And 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 then when do you want me to go? And and what do I need to do it? And how do you want me to proceed? Those are the questions that you want us to ask of you. And this is why we pray. This is why we seek your face because you have all the answers. When friends and family and loved ones don't have answers for us. You have the perfect answer and you will always give it if we ask with a sincere heart. And so Lord, I'm praying for each and every one of us that we come into the fullness of the promises of our lives in Jesus' holy and mighty name and continue to bless Marquetta and her household and family for the great work that they do. Continue to expand and uplift and show them the way forward that they can continue to have the impact in the world that you designed for them to have in Jesus' precious, holy and mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. That was so powerful. Thank you again for, you're welcome, for taking time out of your day to uh, talk purpose with us. I would love to have you back on in the future. It'd be my pleasure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks so much, guys. God bless. That was so powerful as I was sitting here watching it with you again. I was just blown away at the level of knowledge that she has talking about purpose. So real quick before we go in the chat, I want to share her links again, and then I'm going to put it in the description of all the videos um, as well. So there we go right there. Liveforresults.com. Um, I do not have, we are not affiliated. I don't get a cut of sales or anything like that. I just wanted you to experience the same thing I experienced when I read her book and when I went through her online course. She's brilliant. She is amazing. This is nothing but goodness wrapped up in a book and in an audio series. As you can tell, she's Carnegie Mellon. Come on. She is truly, truly, truly amazing. So tell me in the comments what your biggest takeaway was from this interview. I'm really interested. Purpose is something that so many people 
I mean, we just overthink and it's just life experiences and so many things happen, but we have to realize too that, let me, let me back up and let me say this slowly because there's so many things dropping in my spirit. When it comes to purpose, if you think about how the Lord, oh, we, Jesus. So this morning I was listening to an audio and this audio, it was, it was brilliant. This man said, if you look at a, 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 a kernel of corn, right? Inside that kernel of corn, if you cut it, you can't physically see the, the um, different stalks of corn that's going to grow from this tiny little seed. You can't see it, but it's already programmed to do so when it's watered, has the manure to nurture it and sunlight, right? So if you think about us as human beings, you can't cut us in half and see purpose, but it's already programmed in us. But it is our duty to seek God to understand the purpose so that we can walk in it. But what the enemy does not want is for us to walk in purpose because of the other people who are destined and assigned to us for a particular moment in their lives so that they can go and fulfill the destinies and purposes on their lives. So this topic is so important. It's one of the the most important things that you could figure out in this lifetime is operating and walking in your purpose. All right, let me go over here to the comments. Whoo, I'm fired up. Y'all should have saw me over here. I had my hands up. I was, oh, it was good. It was good, 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 good. All right, yes, wasn't this good right here? Take the value out of trauma. I am not my circumstance. I have the power to choose. Yeah, when I was younger, man, I don't, like I said in, in the interview, I don't know what prompted me to have that type of mindset. It could only have been the grace of God and the seed that was planted in me that the Lord watered and grew because I knew that I could not. It was not in my DNA to become a statistic. And I didn't want my brothers to become a statistic. No matter what our circumstances were, we were not our circumstances. And so that right there, that programming is sometimes something that's in us that we don't even know is there. But once we, the mind is a powerful thing. Once you decide to do something and walk in it, of course, all kinds of things are going to come your way. Obstacles are going to come. Um, everything is going to come, but it's up to us to, to keep our feet on that solid ground to walk out the thing that we've been called here to do. Mm. Hannah says, doing things in parallel doesn't work for other people either. It's not just me. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Whew, I could talk for a whole hours on that, but yeah, that's a big one because a lot of, I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody come through uh, one of my mentorship programs, the business one in particular, and they'll show up or, you know, in the beginning when I do their interview or whatever, whichever program they're in, they'll name eight different things that they're currently doing right then. And it's too much. It'll spread you too thin. <clears throat> I am a firm believer that God didn't give us those talents to let them go to waste, but we have to understand which path to take and what to do first and what not to do first. And a lot of that comes with seeking the Lord in prayer. You are so very welcome, Krista. Thank you for sharing this. I truly needed it. Amen. Amen. Uh, Lanisha says that you have to walk in your purpose and do the thing you are good at and stick with that. And when you're finished with that, move on to your, exactly, yes. I'm so glad that we touched on that in the, in the interview because there's so many people, just like I, like I just said, who have so many different talents, but it's important to understand how to walk in each one and at what time you're supposed to walk into each one. Uh, Nina says, I am at a crossroad as a result of my dad having transitioned this year. I'm so sorry to hear that. And this book will minister to my needs. Amen. I'm praying for your revelation too, Nina. So Heavenly Father, I just pray that as Nina begins to open this book and that she, as she begins to, and this is for anyone, 
as they begin to open up this book and consume the material, I pray for divine and supernatural revelation to hit them like a ton of bricks to where when they put pen to paper, they just start writing and, and, and they can't stop writing because you're flowing through their hands to write down whatever it is that you have for them in this season of their lives. I pray that for each and every individual under the sound of my voice in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Alicia says, uh, definitely took away how it's okay to take your time and nurture one purpose, craft, business, et cetera, at a time. That, I think that's the biggest takeaway for a lot of people. She just helped me realize that I can be talented in more than one thing and be in my purpose. There you have it. Uh, Vanessa says we have, by the way, that was Stephanie. Uh, Vanessa says we have to fight the good fight to finish the race and most importantly, keep the faith. Second Timothy four and seven. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Vicky. Yes. Share this live. Yep. It'll be available for replay as soon as I close it out. Um, D Taylor says, write it down and make it plain is what I keep hearing. Amen. You are so, so welcome. Dan O'Reilly says, that's a gold nugget. Taking the good out of your bad experience and move on. Love that. Me too. And I'm going to leave it on that comment. Oops, there's another one. <laughs> That's what I struggle with. What's in my purpose? Well, prayerfully, this interview helped you to tap into that. And again, before I go, let me just share those links with you. MarquettaBreslin.com slash live for results. And be sure to go and follow Eleanor on Instagram. Um, this is also her website, uh, Instagram.com at live for results. All right. Uh, again, she's an amazing woman. Eleanor, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to drop so many gems. I have to have you back on here to talk a little bit deeper about this. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Listen, I'm live every day this week, but Friday, um, I will be talking about or taking you through the process of building a lace closure from scratch. Um, to give you some behind the scenes on that, I have some hair that I purchased from uh, a place in New York about three years ago, and I never is still sitting in the bag that I got it from. And I'm going to uh, walk you through my process for making a wig out of that hair. So um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, the first episode in that series is tomorrow at 7 p.m., and it, it'll be the same time, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I love each and every one of you and pray that you have an amazingly abundant week that is filled with revelation and blessings. I'll talk to you soon.